Hi, it's Will again. I'm here to give you the second part of the ZMOD tutorial series. We're going to be going over the program in a more general way today, uh, looking at prefabs and creating levels and having fun with some uh, projectiles and weapons. So we're going to start off with creating a project, and we're going to call the project test. Now the menus have changed slightly since the last video. Um, you can now create levels and, and prefabs by going to the project menu and then create and then uh, template level. Uh, in the last video I showed how you could right click these folders and create uh, prefabs and levels that way. But there's a more useful menu here. So we're going to create a template level. We'll call it my level. Now the prefabs, prefabs are game entity definitions and they essentially define how uh, an entity behaves and its structure in the game engine. Uh, we see some prefabs here, some of them functionally are quite obvious, uh, the player for example. Uh, there's a few strange ones uh, such as shoot slot P, uh, but we'll explain those um, later in the video. So let's go to a simple prefab, directional light, and you see we have two behaviours attached. Now behaviours are essentially um, modular components that do exactly what they say on the tin, they, they um, control the behavior of a prefab in the in the engine. So we have a light source behavior here which is causing the prefab to uh, um, mid light and we have a locator. The locator defines um, the entity's position, uh, orientation and size inside the world and it's a mandatory behavior you'll find every single prefab has, has a locator. You can edit these properties with the transformation tools up here, and you can also use the keys W, E, and R to uh, shift between translation, rotation, and scale. So if I push W and I move the object around, you see the locator position changes. I can also set these values manually if I just select the property and enter in zero to send it back to the origin. Uh, now, if you notice, the camera hasn't uh, moved with the object uh, if the um, it's because we've moved it in the in the property grid. If you push F, uh, the camera will move back to the selected object. So this light source behaviour, um, we have a directional light here, so we've set the light type to directional, and we have a white colour, so we can change the colour to something a little bit more noticeable. Um, if you just click the value and let's make it a horrible radioactive green kind of colour. Um, to see this in the level, uh, we could just run the level now, but I want to run through some of the basics of how prefabs end up in the level. So we created our template up here. Uh, to open it up we can either double click it or right click and say open. And this creates a new tab. Uh, we can get back to the project by going back to the project tab here. And uh, we can close this level tab and reopen it as much as we want. So inside the level we have um, a scenes folder and resources. Now scenes are um, essentially containers for a special type of prefab called a prefab instance. And scenes are useful because you can um, spawn them and then unload them. And in Strikes U Zero we use them to uh, put all of our uh, prefab instances that we need into um, different stages. And uh, you get a checkpoint between each stage and they're good in breaking up your mission into different segments. Right now though we only need the one scene and uh, we've been given one scene by the, the template level which has four prefabs in it. So we have the spawn point which is where the player will spawn, uh, the directional light which is the instance of the, um, of the the directional light prefab we were just editing, you have an environment which is glowing quite madly because it's selected. But this is the skybox for the um, for the level. Now we have an effects um, instance which controls the post-processing. So if we go back to our directional line, uh, you notice the difference between prefab instance already is it has a different icon and it's located in the scene and it also has this source uh, property up here which points back to the prefab from which it's getting all of its properties and behaviors and structure. In this case it's the directional light we were we were just editing. Uh, we can go back to that prefab if we uh, right click this property and say select or just double click it. So if you notice the green color that we set has passed through into uh, the instance 
Now we have a number of properties here, some of which are greyed out and some of which are bold and underlined. This is essentially indicating which properties have been overridden by the instance itself. Now overriding properties is quite a powerful feature that allows you to um, point to a particular prefab but choose not to override or use some of the properties from that prefab. So in this situation we are using uh, the rotation and, and scaling values of the direction light but we've set our position to something else. Now if we go back to our directional light prefab and we for example change the, the roll to 90 if we then go back to the instance you'll notice the 90 has passed through but the other properties such as um, the X position because it's been overridden it still remains as one in order to override a property you simply need to select it right click and say override or remove the override to set it back to the original value so if we run our level as it is push F6 or go to project and then test we'll have a green light shining down on the player lovely radioactive green uh, if we go back to the tool, push run stop uh, now what we can do is override that colour in the instance so uh, if we go to the light colour, right click and say override and then we can change this to an even worse colour, horrible fluorescent pink colour now this is overriding the green that we set in the original prefab and if we were to run it now it will look even better now directional lights work in a bit of a strange way but you don't have to set them very often so it's, it's you know you kind of set them once and then uh, you leave them be so it's not too difficult but essentially they work uh, if you imagine a vector from the origin point of 0, 0, 0 pointing to where the directional light is in the scene uh, so if we were to set this directional light at uh, 0 and 0 0 on the x and 0 on the y but 1 on the z we'd have our um, light direction from here pointing this way along this axis so this would essentially mean uh, if we have our player spawning at zero and heading off into the Z, the light will be behind us. And we can quickly check that with a should be a big pink like light behind the player. There we go. So the other big part of the level is the resources folder. Um, the resources um, has a big list of all of the assets that the level needs in order to load properly. Um, you can see here we've got prefabs, uh, there's some, uh, the level script here, and models, and collision meshes. And Zmod attempts to uh, keep the list as concise as possible, and also tries to um, stop any bad things happening with deleting uh, assets that are required by, by prefabs or instances. So some of them are greyed out, and they have a number by them. Uh, this is uh, the player mesh and as we can see it's greyed out and it says it's got one reference so if you right click anything in the resources folder and say view references in level you can see that it's being used by the player prefab now the player prefab in this situation is, is kind of an interesting thing to talk about um, you'll notice it doesn't actually have an instance associated with it now um, this is because we need to spawn the player via script um, we don't want an instance the player straight away because we need to do some complicated things uh, such as add weapons or add the cockpit view to the player um, and so we need it in the level but we don't want it to be spawned when the scene is spawned and when the level is spawned we just want to spawn it ourselves via script and so what we've done is added the player here um, to the resources but not to the scene itself and you do this by um, going to your prefab list and finding the prefab you want to uh, add to the level and we'll, we'll go through the instance and the, uh, the resources so if I, if I want to add the point light to the scene I right click and I say create instance and I find the level I want to add it to 
and this will give me the available scenes that I can add uh, point light to so I want to add it to the scene because it's the only one and there we have an instance of the point light in the scene and we also ZMod has also added um, the prefab here to the resources now we can also um, just add it to the resources folder uh, by going to um, well let's add, let's add um, a different player to show this process so um, I'm going to go to the uh, prefab directory for strikes zero to do this and we import uh, the Durandal or possibly the Marauder prefab uh, which is one of the strike suits so if I right click the prefabs folder and I say import prefab or I go to project uh, import and then prefab get a big list of all the game entities that are available from Strike C Zero. Uh, we've got everything here from the enemy and ally fighters to carriers and big props like the, the large stations. Um, so I'm going to go to the player folder and I'll find the Marauder. Remember you can also quick search with the um, search here. So I'm going to select Marauder and import and this will import all of the prefabs that are required uh, for the Marauder as well as the Marauder prefab itself. Uh, there's lots of strange looking prefabs here, you don't need to worry about these. Um, a lot of the Strike Suit Zero prefabs have um, legacy prefabs with them uh, which are required to make them work with animation and various other systems uh, but you can, you can ignore them for the time being. You just need to be concerned with the, the Marauder prefab here. So if we wanted to change um, change the player to the Marauder, uh, we'd need to edit the script a tiny bit. So if we go to the level script, by selecting the level and then going over to the level property here, and we can right click and say open, or we can just double click it. And here we have the basic template level script that's uh, given to us. Uh, so we have um, a star function, uh, update, which is called every update frame, some uh, deinitialization and some helper functions to create the player and the camera. And if you notice here we have um, the name player and this is the name of the prefab which we're going to use as the player uh, and at the moment it is using the default value player. So if we were to change this to Marauder and save the script and run the level, we'd actually run into problems because we haven't included the Marauder inside the level as a prefab. We've created it in part, as part of the project but in terms of the level resources it's not in there yet and the level doesn't know where, where to find it. So if we just run this, show this process, we run this level now, we'll actually get a crash and it will complain that it's trying to load a prefab that doesn't exist. So there's the crash and the crash report says the prefab doesn't exist marauder. So if you ever get this error message you need to find the prefab that it's talking about. Uh, right click and we don't want to create an instance because you know like I've said the player needs to be in the resources folder and we're spawning it via script so we want to use the include exclude feature and you'll be given a big list of all the levels okay we only have one in this situation and marauder isn't part of it so the box is unchecked so we need to check that box and say OK. And now the Marauder is included in the resource list here as well as all of its dependencies. So now if we run the level we should be controlling the Marauder and there it is with a horrible uh, pink light behind it and we have the default weapons on it from the template level so we're going to do something about that as well close that. So I'm going to import uh, one of the weapons from Strike Suit Zero again because it's got all of the the behaviors and, and uh, systems in place to work already. So if I go to the prefabs folder and say import prefab and I kind of like the medium plasma so I'm going to find uh, the weapons folder and I'm going to get this prefab weapon underscore gun underscore medium plasma. Now this is imported uh, projectiles it's using and some other uh, less important prefabs but this is the most important one. Um, so if we want to attach this to the player now and we also need to go back to the script 
again and we need to go into the create player function here and if you notice uh, in this call to spawn player entity uh, we're giving it a list of weapons and a number of weapons here this number is essentially the length of this list so we could add other prefabs in here and the uh, the number of weapons would be three in this situation but we only want one weapon and it's currently looking at uh, the prefab named weapon, which is the default one you get with the template level, which uh, which isn't very good, and very interesting. So we need to make sure we've added the prefab to the scene uh, by doing the in include feature. And we're going to copy the name. I'm just going to rename this and then copy that name, and I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to save the script. And then if we run the level with F6, <coughs> we'll find we'll have the medium plasma weapon. Now we can start having some fun with some of the stats because at the moment this is draining quite a lot of energy and it's not a very high rate of fire, it's the balanced weapon from Strike 2 Zero. So we're going to tune it up a bit. First of all, if we go to the weapon gun medium plasma prefab and we look at the new gun behavior you'll notice a lot of um, properties which control the behavior of the gun uh, we have a rate of fire cooldown uh, we have some accuracy um, properties with the spread so what we're going to do is we're going to set the cooldown to zero and all of these um, heating factors to zero we make the rate of fire very high uh, the spread angle, we're going to make it kind of inaccurate, like a spray and pray gun. And the energy usage was quite high, so energy per shot, we're going to make zero. Now if we run the game with F6, and remember you can go to project and then test. We should have a much more powerful weapon. That looks much better. Some of those projectiles look a bit crazy though. <coughs> so, what we can do now is start being a little bit crazy. Um, if we notice we have uh, the prefab just spawning as part of the, uh, the gun behavior is the projectile here. Um, we can change this prefab or we can find it by selecting it in the, uh, selecting it in the project tab and we have player underscore gun underscore plasma medium and this is the actual prefab that's fired as part of the gun's operation um, it's using the default uh, mesh at the moment obviously uh, what we can do though is change this to something a little bit more absurd so let's uh, right click the mesh and say attach asset I'm going to go to system models and let's put in something really crazy like um, let's go in ships Radar, fighters, axe, and radar axe. So what this is going to do is fire a, an allied uh, fighter as part of the projectile from this weapon. Um, so if we just test that now with F6. Ah, wow. Okay, so it's, um, yeah, that looks kind of crazy. So what we're going to do now is also um, we want to increase the damage that this does. And we can do that in the projectile behavior. So we have impact damage here. I'm going to make it very, very high. We also have the speed of the particle and things like that. Uh, these are actually events which get called uh, on a script that's attached to the object and we'll be uh, going through uh, some of the event handling stuff in later tutorials uh, but for now let's just shoot out something so uh, we've set the impact damage very high uh, I'm going to import something big from the game uh, I think a frigate uh, enemy frigate it's quite a big prefab so it's got a lot to import and this is the enemy frigate from, from Strike Z Zero uh, the reason I've used a frigate rather than a fighter is um, in order to control the fighter's AI 
you need to give it uh, orders and you need to kind of specify priorities and that requires some script work which we will be covering in a, in a tutorial very soon uh, there's already some samples on the wiki but um, we need to go through how to uh, control those in a little more detail whereas uh, the turrets on the frigate are just programmed to shoot at the closest enemy that they find uh, they don't have to move around so the control systems are a li little bit simpler um, so we should get this frigate shooting at us uh, when we put it in the level so um, I'm going to instantiate it in the scene uh, if we go to this, uh, the right click menu create instance at my level and then in the scene we'll put it here and I'm just going to move it over here and rotate it Now remember we set the um, damage on the projectile to be very high so I don't think this frigate is going to last very long. Um, but let's see how it goes. So I'm F6. And I'm just going to fly over to the left a bit to get a better view. Uh, so the frigate spotted us, uh, overcome the missiles. I'm just going to fire these, and wow, <laughs> okay, it didn't last very long at all. It didn't seem like a fair fight. One other thing I just want to talk about, uh, lastly, about the weapons is um, the shoot slot that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm just going to go back into the uh, level script and change this back to um, player, which was the default. Uh, player you got with the template level. If you go back to the player prefab, we notice we have two sub prefabs in here called shoot slot P1 and shoot slot P2. Now the, sh the name shoot slot P is uh, a special name inside the system uh, where if you have a, uh, a gun behavior it will be looking for um, any prefabs named shoot slot P uh, and then a number in order to fire projectiles from that. Um, there are other types of shoot slots, shoot slot M for missiles, shoot slot T for torpedoes. Um, I'll go over those in a later tutorial, but for now we just need to be concerned with these two. Uh, so, the shoot slots essentially uh, define the barrel of the gun that you can shoot from, and we have two at the moment. But if we had, um, if we had a mesh or a prefab with, with more places to shoot from, uh, we'd need more shoot slots, so what we can do is we can clone these ones. Um, I'm going to right click it and say clone. And I'm going to rename this to shoot slot P3 and shoot slot P4. And then if I move them into a location where you can easily see that they're uh, working. And then if I run the game with F6. you'll see that we're shooting from the right and above as well which is quite a formidable weapon <laughs> going on there so that concludes uh, this quick tutorial on, um, on weapons and projectiles I'm going to be going into more detail into prefabs um, with more tutorials soon and we've got um, some scripting tutorials coming up from one of our designers as well. Uh, so I hope this was uh, informative and um, have fun.